What is going on, guys? And welcome back to iCoach Nutrition Radio. Today, I have the privilege of bringing on a client that has had an awesome success story um, over the last few months of us working together. I guess now we're probably coming up on close to a close close to a year. Um, but she's had amazing progress. She's down 50 plus pounds and just has absolutely transformed her body, her lifestyle, um, and therefore her life. And so, uh, without further ado, Michelle, welcome to iCoach Nutrition Radio. Super excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. For those of you that are on video, uh, she's rocking her, her iCoach shirt here, as she <laughs> always does at the gym. So love love to see clients represent. But um, Michelle, for the, for the listeners, for the watchers here, can you give us just kind of a little bit of, of background um, on yourself and, and who you are, what you do, um, and then we'll kind of dive into your story and your journey? Um, sure. I uh, I'm currently a community association manager. I've been in the industry for 20 years. I started out doing this in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it is one of those jobs that can consume a lot of time, and a majority of it is done at a desk. So I have for the last. 10 years or so started to get very sedentary and very comfortable enjoying cooking. And one of my favorite things to do is hospitality. So, uh, I'm definitely a foodie and, uh, I like to do hobbies that require a lot of sitting. Let's just put it that way. So, um, I didn't really get a lot of exercise and, I knew that I needed to make some changes, but I wasn't in a big hurry to do any of that. Um, and so the company that I currently work for, Real Manage, they put out a fitness challenge. They kind of threw down the gauntlet and they said, hey, if you guys are interested in participating, we will help you out with the expense. We'll get you the, the coach to use for 90 days. And, um, you know, we want you to really take advantage of it. And I knew when I heard this, um, that it was not going to be something that I was going to enjoy doing per se, but it was an opportunity. And I felt like if I didn't take advantage of it, I would probably never get around to doing what I needed to do. And so I signed up for the, uh, personal trainer. And I got Justin. And so um, it's been quite an interesting journey. There's been a lot of challenges for me, but I kind of dove in head first and decided that I just had to take on anything that was put in front of me. So I have lost nearly 50 pounds. Um, my mobility has increased tremendously. My first goal was to be able to get up off the floor by myself. Um, I needed help from other people. I needed furniture to climb up on. And, uh, you know, at 54 years old, that's not where I should be. So um, it's been an amazing journey for me. I feel like I'm constantly hitting new goals and seeing new developments. And so that's been very exciting. That's amazing. Such an amazing testimony. I, um, I mean, we've, I feel like, especially recently here, it's like every check-in form, I'm like screenshotting uh, questions and answers and, and sharing them as as I coach uh, nutrition client wins because like where your mindset is at today versus mm -hmm. where your mindset was at, you know, when we first started, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm looking at and I'm talking to like a completely different person. So um, it's, it's amazing to see. And, and I know, I mean, I, I preach all the time, right? I've been doing this since I was 18 years old. Um, I've worked with so many clients and, and so I see mm -hmm. these types of transformations and I know the potential, uh, for people there, but so much of it is just getting people to, you know, trust the process and to be coachable and to, to really believe that this is possible for them and, and not just believe, but also actually like truly think that they deserve this right and and mm -hmm. so um i want you to kind of re like think back and reflect back to where where you were at before we started that 90 day challenge um and and kind of think about like the big rocks that that i always talk about right sleep nutrition 
exercise, hydration, stress management, personal development, right? And mm. so just kind of go through each one of those big rocks and kind of give us where you were at when we first started kind of walking through each one of those big rocks. And so we'll kick it off first there with, with sleep. Where, where was your sleep at? Kind of describe that. Oh, sleep was terrible. So I work from home most days and I'm um, supposed to be at my desk uh, before 8.30 in the morning. So it was very easy for me to occupy my mind until late hours and um, and then just stay in bed until I absolutely had to get up. Um, it just made it more difficult for me to try to negotiate adding anything else to my plate. So I was in a point with sleep where um, I knew I wasn't getting enough. I definitely did not have a schedule. And I really struggled with consistency. So um, there are many times I would stay up too late, not get enough sleep and be lethargic for the entire day. And then there were times that I would just sleep way too much because I felt like I had to catch up and that would just waste my time. So, um, yeah, it was all over the place. It wasn't really benefiting me the way it should. And, uh, I just felt like, um, little kid. I felt like a little kid, like I got to stay up as late as I wanted and I was going to. So yeah, it didn't I, do me any good. <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to kind of look back at, you know, kind of like revisit here. So, so we kicked off that challenge September 1st, right? 2023. Mm -hmm. And so it's April 2nd here now. Um, mm -hmm. So what is that? I, so a year, I guess, not quite a year there. We're coming up on like seven months, right? Mm hmm so if we look back to the initial questionnaire, we're looking back at your biofeedback section, right? And so current number of hours of sleep per night was five hours to seven hours a night, right? Um, and you weren't having any issues falling asleep. You were waking up a, through, uh, a few times throughout the night. And, and then you did say that you were feeling rested when, when you woke up in the morning. But as you know now, right, how many, how many hours of sleep is, is the recommendation? Oh, between seven and nine. Seven and nine hours of sleep, mm -hmm. right? And so when we first started, you're getting five to seven. And then mm -hmm. if, I, if I look at now where your last week on the habit tracker was, there wasn't a single, I, I'm taking it back, there was one day here, and this mm -hmm. was this was just this last week, because normally you're not there, uh, that was under seven hours, right? And so yep. you're, you're getting seven to nine hours of sleep now, whereas before you were getting five to seven. So like that's- yep. That's a huge, huge, huge transformation, right? And obviously you've seen that in your energy levels and productivity, um, just your overall mood and mindset. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think I think sleep's probably one of the most undervalued habits out there. It's 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 what so many people don't prioritize. Um, mm -hmm. I always kind of joke, I'm like, you know, people will come to me, they're like, hey, what pre-workout do you recommend? And I ask them how many hours of sleep that they're getting. And they're like, Oh, five or six. And I'm like, mm -hmm. there's this new pre-workout. It's amazing. It's called sleep. Um, it's actually free. <laughs> you don't even have to pay for it. Uh, yep. Right. Um, and just, it's such a neglected, it's such a neglected habit there. Uh, but mm -hmm. we've been able to prioritize that and you've made, you've made huge strides in it. And it's kind of the foundation that carries over into your nutrition and exercise. And like, at the end of the day, if you don't get good sleep, it affects all of the other habits there. Right. It absolutely does. Yep. So super proud of you for, for the transformation that's been had there. Um, and then from there on the, the nutrition side of things, right? So if we look into just kind of giving you a little bit of a, a refresher there on the nutrition side of things. So we were, um, so if I look back at, at the habit tracker, right? Because we, we weren't, we weren't tracking our food at all. So we didn't really have necessarily like awareness around that per se. Uh, but if mm -hmm. I just look at the first week of your calorie intake tracking on, on my fitness pal, your lowest calorie intake was 987 calories and your highest calorie intake was 1800. And we were on what I'd reference as the, the calorie roller coaster ride, right? Mm -hmm. Calories were all over the place. Um, and then on the protein side of things, kind of the same thing. Lowest day of protein was 59 grams. Uh, highest day of protein was 114. But again, kind of the yeah. protein roller coaster ride. 
Mm -hmm. So kind of talk me through a little bit of, of the transformation in your nutrition uh, over the last, you know, six, seven months here. What's, what are some of the, the most notable changes or, or some of the, the biggest kind of takeaways and, and feedback that you can give to th those that are listening and watching here? Because again, what this podcast is all about, right, is we want to be able to have people watch this and have people listen to this, right, mm -hmm. and be influenced so that they can hopefully not make some of the same, you know, mistakes, right? Because Let's be honest, it's 2024, right? Mm -hmm. And people are more confused about nutrition and, and what it means to live a healthy lifestyle than ever before. Yep. Um, and so just, you know, hopefully kind of this podcast can help people kind of filter out the, the BS, if you will, and help them to kind of collapse time and not make some of the same mistakes, um, you know, that, that we made there. So what, what, were, what are some of the kind of taking yourself back in terms of nutrition and, and the nutrition transformation that's take place? What are, the, what are some of the biggest things that you've learned there? Um, well, definitely I was too much on the carb and of the spectrum. I love pasta. I love pastries. I uh, didn't get enough fruits and vegetables. So I had to reprogram my shopping habits first and foremost, and I'm the shopper for the entire household. So I had to think about what I needed and in order to be successful at this new program that I was getting into, but also what I could do for my family that wasn't going to send them into a spiral of just hating me all of a sudden. So we looked at a lot of the options that we could, uh, where we could do both. And it does take a little bit of time um, at the beginning to really sit and plan a couple of good meals that you can work into your, your family's diet per se. Um, if you're by yourself, it's just that much easier, but you have to consider the idea of trying to get rid of some of the processed foods. Not always hard because everybody likes their salties and their sweets. The other part is trying to up your protein and have a lot available. I was buying chicken um, in big, big, big packages. And I would buy frozen chicken and I would buy cooked chicken and I would buy, you know, chicken off the bone. Um, I've been known to stop by the grocery store and get two or three rotisserie chickens at a time because it's just easy to take that, pull it off and put it on your plate when you need to meet your protein goal. So you have to really consider the idea that this is like getting into a new relationship or a new job that you really want. You get excited at first and you have to use that energy and momentum to build on and not let yourself get frustrated at the first little thing that comes along. So changing the, the nutrition part for me is something I had experienced several times in the past because I've been involved in other programs. Um, but really sitting down and looking at what food is made of has made the most difference. I, I want to make sure that if I'm going to do this and I'm going to make the sacrifices or spend more money on certain vegetables and fruits that I'm getting the most bang for my buck. So, um, it is one of those things where you have to negotiate with your own appetite and your own cravings for a little bit, but if you meet your goals daily, if you meet your protein goals daily, your body's cravings tend to get a little squelched and they don't have as much to say anymore. So it does work if you are consistent with it and you continue it. Um, I, like he said, it's been seven months for me now and I don't miss the candy. I don't miss the chips. I don't miss sodas for sure. So it's definitely worth it. Well, and what's, and what's really interesting too is, you know, obviously like through the kind of the initial phase of this, like so much of your goals were, were losing weight, right? And we still have weight that we want to get off. And this is probably mm -hmm. like part one podcast of, of uh, you know, part one of two, right? Because we, we still, mm -hmm. we still working towards, towards goals here. But um, I, I think that there's so much value that, that you can bring to, to the listeners. And so, 
you know, if we really think about kind of like where we were, like, you know, eating in a calorie deficit, losing weight, losing body fat, right, and accomplishing that weight loss goal, now we've kind of transitioned into reverse dieting your calorie intake up to maintenance calories or closer to maintenance mm -hmm. calories, right? And so, like, hearing what, what everybody just heard there in terms of how low some of your calorie intake was before we started, where, mm -hmm. where is your calorie intake at now? Right. And, and what are some of the things that you're seeing in terms of the, the strength training? And this can kind of lead into the workout side of things, um, in terms of, you know, you're, you're, you're now fueling your body much more properly at mm -hmm. 2000 calories a day, right. Mm -hmm. You're hitting your protein intake numbers, you're strength training more consistently than ever before. Right. And some of the comments that, uh, well, I won't talk for you. You can, you can share. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think that getting into that habit of consistently consuming the, the good amount of protein every day and keeping the calories consistent has, um, improved the sleep quality that I have. Um, it has improved how I do workouts. So it, there, you know, there's, there's a difference between going out and getting your steps in and going to the gym and working with weights. And that was something that I dreaded at first. I did not want to do it if I didn't have to. I was like, how much of this can I do from home? Um, so, you know, at some point you just have to like throw it in and go and, and hit the machines and pick up the dumbbells. Um, I had lost a lot of my strength and it was a real eye opener for me to show up at the gym the first time and try to lift a five or a 10 pound dumbbell and struggle um, because I always considered myself pretty strong and uh, muscular, but, you know, I'm getting to that age where muscle tone is a real challenge. And so having the extra calories and having the amount of protein that I consume and being on the sleep schedule, all of it fits together. And so um, I finally got to a point where I can get up out of bed, throw on my workout clothes the way I look the way I do now. But I try to be ready to go uh, always. And so when I get up and go to the gym, I, um, I'm now able to, um, I'm getting up there in weights. I'm probably not where I should be yet, but, uh, the main thing is that I'm able to increase the, the size of the weights that I'm picking up and I'm able to increase, um, the resistance reps. Uh, so there's been a very noticeable difference in how effective it's been and I think the big thing for me that I get very excited about is when I see videos of myself doing any of this, I can see the muscle tone now and I can see the the working of my muscles as I move. Um, I don't think I've ever really seen that before because I've never had real instruction um, that made sense to get me there. So that's been a huge motivation for me. Plus being there, you see other people that are in their workout clothes and they've been doing it for a while. And you're just like, mm, one day that's going to be me. So I'm looking forward to that. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, the most important, I mean, I would argue, yes, we are absolutely just getting started with strength training. I would, I would argue mm -hmm. we're even like just getting started with this whole entire journey here. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's, that's kind of crazy to say as you're approaching this 50 pounds loss mark. Um, mm -hmm. but just, I mean, just where your mindset's at and, and how much of a lifestyle change it is and, and, and just seeing it carry out into all of these other aspects of your life as well. We talked about with your daughter we talked about, you know, with your mm -hmm. husband, we talked about with your ministry, all these things, right. And we'll get more into that. But, um, the most important part is that you're, you're consistently working out, right. You're mm -hmm. consistently prioritizing strength training. You're consistently sending the workout videos to get feedback on and improve your form and technique and make sure the intensity is where it needs to be. Um, right. You're, you're getting stronger, right. Um, mm -hmm. also you're, you're, you're not afraid to take up space in the gym, 
right? You're right. you're now getting into the the section where, like you said, the the big boys are, right? You're you're not yeah. just staying in the women's only section, right? Yeah. Um, so the confidence that's gained from the gym translates out into every other aspect of your life, um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I truly, truly believe that. Um, talk to me a little bit though about two things. Number one, the fear, right? Because you have this fear and oh, I've worked with a lot of, we work with a lot of women that have the same fear, the fear mm -hmm. of calories going up, right? So you lost all this mm -hmm. weight and I was like, all right, we, we can't diet forever. Now we need to start reverse dieting calories up to maintenance. So the fear of going from, uh, I forget how low we got down, maybe like 1400 calories, something like that. Now we're up to 2000. So the yeah. fear of slowly reverse dieting your calorie intake up, right? And then also the fear of, of lifting weights and lifting heavy and mm -hmm. strength training. Because again, God forbid, if I go and lift lift weights, if I lift heavy weights, I'm going to get so bulky. I'm, I'm gonna, I don't yeah. like, Coach Justin, I don't want to become a bodybuilder. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, know, I know, Michelle. I know. <laughs> so, so talk to me a little bit about those two pieces, like the fear of, of, of eating more calories, right. And yeah. the fear of prioritizing, uh, strength training and, and lifting heavy. Um, I think, yes, you're right. There is a fear that you're going to bulk up a little bit and look maybe too masculine, but I don't really see that too much from most of the people that are working out in the weight section. Um, they, you know, they seem to just really have nice tone. They, and they're doing heavier weights than I am. So it, it helps to be in that environment for sure. And just kind of see what's going on. The biggest part is getting over the mindset that we have that increasing your calories is going to be detrimental because most of us already have a fear of failing. And when we're told that we need to stop doing something like uh, drinking or eating sugar or smoking cigarettes, we know that we have triggers and those triggers are going to set us off and those cravings are going to start talking to us again. And so the idea of trying to add more food when you learned how to be uh, content with 1200 calories a day is where we actually started. Um, it, it just feels unnatural based on what we've been taught. And so it was gradual, which was good. We only went up by 200 calories each step. Um, so that helped a lot. And the other part is that, yeah, I, go in, I get my sleep and I get up and I'm going to the gym now five times a week and I'm going first thing in the morning. And so having the calories the day before has, I think what has made me most successful at being able to do that transition to morning workouts, getting up earlier and um, really putting my all into it. So it's, uh, you know, I'm working with other women and that was one of the first questions I got asked is, you know, what if I fail? And I know just said, you're going to fail. You're going to fail a lot and you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. The idea is that you are changing your lifestyle and not doing a diet. You know, you're not in it just for the next six months. So it does. It does. It, it kind of wears on you a little bit at first, but I think it's easy if you've already been watching your nutrition to find those extra 200 calories and just add it to a fruit bowl on your table or add it to some meal prepping that you have in the fridge. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. Yeah. And, and failure is feedback, right? Failure is mm -hmm. feedback. And if you can have that kind of growth mindset, that abundancy mindset, you can use that feedback to quote unquote fail forward, right? Like mm -hmm. failure should not make you quit because at the end of the day, like if, if we're really trying to make this a lifestyle, well, this is for the rest of your life, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 the culture we live in today is I'm either on a diet or off a diet. And so really breaking that mindset and transforming it into, no, I'm trying to transform my lifestyle, right? I want mm -hmm. to live a healthy lifestyle. It's got to be sustainable, right? right. And so uh, love that. 
So I want to, um, I want to dive in, we could dive in a little bit more of the hydration and stress management and stuff like that. But, but I want to, I want to make sure with, with the time that we have, I want to respect your time. I want to, I want to allow you to kind of really dive into, Hey, if you were listening to this podcast back in, let's say August, right. Before you started this <laughs> journey, what are some of the things that you would share with, with other women or, or just anybody in general um, to maybe encourage them um, you know, if they're thinking about starting their journey, uh, if they're thinking about, you know, potentially in, investing in, in themselves, um, you know, because this this was a huge piece, right? The the mm-hmm. the ninety day contract we did with Real Manage that was basically paid for, <clears throat> right? And then mm-hmm. here we are, three four months later, you continued, right? You continued with coaching, and now you're paying mm-hmm. for everything. These last three or four months, you paid for everything yourself. Right. right. And so like you, you are investing in yourself. Right. And and not just from a financial standpoint, from a time standpoint, from an mm-hmm. energy standpoint. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, any any advice that you would give um, anybody that's listened to this podcast as if you were talking to yourself, uh, mm-hmm. you know, seven months ago before you started this journey. Oh, gosh. I mean, I could probably talk about that for hours. I have so much that goes through my mind. But I think the biggest thing is that a lot of people do not understand is if you can either invest your resources in yourself now, or you can throw it away on doctors in the future. Because if you're not taking care of the the only thing you really can control in your life is how you treat your body. If you're not taking care of your own body, uh, it's not going to take care of you. And that was my fear is I've seen a lot of people, I have a very large family and I've seen a lot of people struggle um, with the ability to get around near the end of their lives, being in a wheelchair, using a walker. And some of it may have been self-inflicted and um, some of it was not. And I think for those who deal with issues that are self-inflicted, now's the time to think about trying to prevent that. You know, things like being able to get up off the floor without help from another person is huge for me. It means that my mobility is increasing. And, um, you know, with grandchildren and children that are still in school, I wanna be able to get up and do these things with them and not just hear about them, because that's no life. Now, the other people who I am watching suffer in my family who did well to take care of themselves and these things are happening to them. They were not self-inflicted. I think if that were me, I would be very frustrated watching how people treat their bodies, knowing that I did everything I could to preserve my health and I'm still struggling. I don't want to be there either, but in honor of them, I really feel like I want to do my best. I want to make sure that I can do all of the physical activities that I should be able to do. I want to be the 90 year old woman who's able to go walking and jogging in the park and not be stuck on a bench watching everybody go by. Um, But there are, you know, a lot of people that are close to my age, men and women, who just don't consider their actions. And um, it's hard because we don't really have those resources made available to us. We have to go look for them. You know, I had to sign up for this. Thank God Real Manage did it. But I had to sign up for this in order to learn everything I've learned. This is not information that's put on TV. It's not in commercials. It's not on social media. It's not in, it's not in our ears when we're in the car. And so we have to go find it. And it takes effort and it takes a, a decision. And sometimes those are the hardest things to make as decisions. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we live in this information age, right? And, and, you know, you've uh, so much of it is, is there, there is so much information out there, but to your point, right? Filtering through the the BS, Mm -hmm. right? Because there's so much conflicting information um, Mm -hmm. and, and really, you know, finding somebody again, that you trust, right? 
um, mm-hmm. to be able to say, all right, you know, I'm, I'm going to trust this person. I'm going to get coached by this person, whether, whether they're formally coaching me or informally coaching me through a podcast or social media or whatever it may be there. But I've got to trust the process because I'm, if I'm just constantly questioning the process, then I'm not going to be consistent. And as we all know, like consistency is the name of the game. Uh, right. But to your point, I uh, one, of, one of my buddies posted something here um, actually today that, that I reposted um, and it, you hit it, it, you know, spot on. He goes, you know, I work with a lot of clients who are 60 plus years old. They tell me all the time that their friends are sick, in pain mm-hmm. or dying. Meanwhile, my clients are fit, healthy and aging with grace, resistance mm-hmm. training, nutrition, you know, you know, these are these are the, the the closest thing that we have to the fountain of youth. And, and the reality of it is, is that our health is our greatest asset. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, like so many things in our life, and, and I'm guilty of it too, right? Not just with fitness, and nutrition, but other areas of life. Sometimes we have to hit, you know, quote unquote, rock bottom before we mm-hmm. wake up and, and smell the roses and, and realize mm-hmm. that our that our health is our greatest asset. But we've yeah. got to choose our heart because it's hard to prioritize living a healthy lifestyle. It absolutely is. But it's also hard to deal with all the repercussions later on in life of not dealing with the life, uh, d- dealing with, you know, uh, prioritizing living a healthy lifestyle. So yeah. um, love that, love what you said there. Um, again, I think that we're definitely going to have a, a part two to this, right? Because like I said, we're just getting started. We're, we're, we're nowhere near to be near being finished. And uh, I actually see your mantra here of the six plus months that says, uh, you know, if you could if you could describe a word or a phrase, um, you know, for the next six plus months, you said, in all caps, how I finish is up to me, right? Mm-hmm. And that's you taking extreme ownership, because as I always say, right, I could be the world's leading expert, I could give you the perfect plan, but I can't mm-hmm. do it for you, right? right? I can't do it for you. And I'm not a babysitter. I'm just not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, so you've got to take that accountability, right? Mm-hmm. And, and this is why we put things like, the tracking tools and the weekly check-ins mm-hmm. and the monthly coaching calls and all of these things into place because at the end of the day like we have to give you the accountability and the support that you need to be successful um, mm-hmm. and we have to walk along you and, and be able to work together one you know work together as a team um because again you know depending upon where you're at in life we are we are literally combating a lifetime of beliefs and traits and skill sets and habits that have gotten you where to, to where you are today and the later that you come to us in life, right, most of the clients we work with, 40, 50, 60 years old, like we're combating all of that, right? Mm-hmm. And so it is hard work, but anything worth having in life takes hard work to obtain. And uh, you're a testament to that and, and, and an inspiration to me and, and to so many clients there with iCoach and to so many people that are going to watch this podcast, uh, listen to this podcast. Uh, and again, I'm going to, when I put the title, I'm going to put part one of two because there's a, there's a <laughs> two of two coming here. Um, and, and I'm excited for that, but Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time today and, and sharing sure. kind of part one of, of your journey, uh, with us here. And, um, yeah, just excited for the next six plus months here and being able to share yep. your, your part two of two. Um, and, um, yeah, thanks again for, for coming on the show. Thanks for having me.